Our next two stories for you tonight are about the growing popularity of live music in the Miami area. We have an interview with the new conductor of the Florida Philharmonic, Miami's orchestra. But first, Gary Craven reports on a recent Pace concert in downtown Miami. Behind that lively music, he shows us a little of the personality these frequent concerts are providing free for those who happen by. How many of you recognize Don Goldie and his trumpet? Perhaps a shot of Don on the Dave Garraway show will help place him. Or maybe playing here with Arthur Godfrey. Don even played with Stan Kenton. Don Goldie brings a wealth of entertaining to any audience he plays for. This is uh, Lionel Hampton, uh, who I know for so many years. This was taken at the Hilton Plaza. I brought him in for a private show and uh, for one of the conventions. And uh, I played with Ham's band when I was in the Army in 19... 1953 in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. His band came through town the first time I met him. And I went up and I said, can I sit in with your band? And he looked me over and said, well, well, all right. So I sat down in the band and played, and I was sitting next to a few interesting people like Quincy Jones and people like that. And I did the whole tour when Ham's band, when he played the North Carolina area, that I had just gone on furlough. And he said, would you like to join the band? I said, hell yes, I'd like to join the band. And that was, uh, that was just a marvelous experience. Miami became home for Don Goldie when Jackie Gleason snared his talents. Well, I was passing through Miami on the way to Puerto Rico and I stopped off to see my mother and I auditioned for him. Hadn't seen him in years. And I ended up as uh, the trumpet solos on the Music for Lovers records yeah. with him. And then I uh, ended up as a musical director of the Hilton Plaza. So I was doing the warm-ups for the TV show and I was a musical director of the hotel and doing all the shows. And we opened with Harry Belafonte and had Tony Fields and had Rowan and Martin and uh, 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 Flip Wilson, I mean, had big names, all people that I had worked with when I first started. So whenever they'd come in and find me there, it was, you know, always big hugs and kisses, and everybody said, you know, what is this? They just came here. I said, hey, this goes back 20 years. Flip Wilson left his whole entourage, came up, and big hug and a kiss, and, you know, we had, we, that's, we go back to when we were working for five bucks a night apiece. Well, this is someone I love dearly and I know since I'm a kid and uh, we were extremely good friends. He was a good friend of my dad's. As you know, my dad played first trumpet with Paul Whiteman, was assistant conductor for 20 years. And uh, I'm the only person that Louis Armstrong let play his horn backstage. Is that right? Yes, and whenever I came back there and uh, uh, I used to do a Louis, well, I still do a Louis Armstrong impersonation. So whenever I'd go backstage, I'd say, what you say, Pops? And he'd look at me and say, What you say, Pops? Playing with Jack could do nothing but benefit me. But that is not the thought when you want to play with somebody like that. The thought is having the privilege of playing with a Jack Teagarden, who I've listened to all my life. But he wouldn't have had me if I didn't play well enough to join him. I understand. And Jack Teagarden was later quoted in his life and when I was with the band saying, the greatest trumpet player I've ever played with. And from Jack Teagard, and that's like God talking, you know, because he's played with everybody, and uh, which absolutely floored me. It was at the first Playboy Festival and his announcement of me. Now, I wasn't with Jack a month, and I was nominated Playboy Jazz Star of the Year, and I heard my, had my first record contract because I was out and being seen. But I wouldn't have cared if we played in Podunk for the rest of my life to stand next just to, to play with him. Just to stand next to Jack Teagarden. That's right. 
You mentioned Miami before and how many artists are coming to Miami now. It seems that jazz goes through a resurgence periodically. Is that Are we seeing one of those now? You're seeing it now for a lot of reasons. There's an older element of people, let's say from the 50s up, they like the commercial stuff and a lot of them are jazz buffs. Then there are the kids who are finding jazz out of the rock era and uh, they're looking for roots to grab onto. A lot of them are musically inclined, but they mm -hmm. find that basically it comes out of blues and uh, uh, it was played in the colored clubs. It was called colored in those days. It's played in the black clubs for that many years because uh, I, played with, I played in the first integrated club in Miami for years when I couldn't get a job on the beach because I played jazz. But I was playing with people like, in one season I remember at the Lord Calvert Club, we played with, uh, we opened with Roy Hamilton, Ella Fitzgerald, Dinah Washington, Billie Holiday, Arthur Prysock, Lulu Reed, Ivory Joe Hunter, Little Willie Johns, Sister Rosetta Thorpe, who was a gospel singer like Mahalia Jackson, and that's one season, and I couldn't wait to get to work every night. Don's life has always revolved around music. He grew up living with the legend of his father's long run with Paul Whiteman, and he learned to put pride in his music and to devote his life to it. Don seems to have been born with a trumpet in his mouth. And so, Don has done a few albums, most of these available now on IJE Records. But despite his success, he's never compromised his special kind of music. Jazz has always been his first love. It's like the old days, um, jazz is a dirty word. Somebody come up and say, is that jazz you're playing? And I would say, no ma'am or no sir, that's, that's just a brisk dance tempo. Why is that? Why, why are people that's that the way people that's the way people were in those years, even, uh, even when I played in Las Vegas. Had to be a, be a commercial tempo, they could be swinging it, but if they thought it was jazz, it was terrible. So we just didn't tell them. Well, what is the distinction? What is jazz, then? Jazz is a, an improvisational uh, line of music on a, on a, usually on a standard tune. You play the harmonics of the chords, and um, you invent another line of music through those chords. And every time you play a jazz tune, it will be different because of that Basically, it's different unless you have a kind of lick that you enjoy playing and everybody has an identification mm -hmm. of some kind of a, of a, of a musical uh, interpolation, for lack of a better word. And Don Goldie is still playing his licks for Miami.